Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today in this video I decided that I wanted to introduce a new topic to you guys. So basically in the last video I taught you guys how to work with the MySQL database in Node.js and normally when I work in a project I don't actually make my queries directly as a, an SQL statement. So I, I never write them like this. So db.query and then inside write like select all from the database like this isn't what i do usually what i do actually is i use a, an arm which is a, an acronym for object relational mapping which basically means that we're going to be treating uh, our database uh, management through objects so we're going to be using a package called sqlize and there are many different packages that you can use many are very famous sqlize is one of the most famous ones this is why i like to use it so basically I'm going to be teaching you guys how to implement SQLize in Node.js. So the first thing we need to do is, you know, we have our Node.js application here. It has almost nothing. It only has a, an express and MySQL as dependencies. And it creates a simple server, which, uh, what is this? Let me remove this. Um, basically it only calls for MySQL and it creates a connection. So the two things we need to install is uh, npm install um, so SQLize, which is the first library and also a CLI for SQLize. So SQLize CLI, basically this, this CLI will allow us to configure a bunch of stuff automatically without having to do it on our own. And this will save like a lot of time. So let me wait for it to download and I'll come back when it finished downloading. So everything finished downloading and in order to run our CLI, we need to write NPM npx actually not npx let's write sqlize init and you can see that a bunch of stuff will appear especially our you know a bunch of folders on our left and many of this don't matter for example you shouldn't be care you shouldn't care about cedars for now because this this is like nothing related to the project we're going to be working with also migrations uh, it shouldn't be necessary the only things that are necessary are the config folder and the models folder. So basically config.json is mentioning like everything we're building with. So you gotta put here all of your information that, that we defined over here, basically our user, our host and our password in our database. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of this and I'm gonna just paste it over here. However, you can see that like some of them change, for example, actually I'm not gonna copy and paste because this is JSON, this isn't JSON, this is an object and this is JSON format. I'm just gonna change this to uh, whatever I have. So my password is password and the database is fake database. This is a database that I created for, for example, in my MySQL workbench. You can see here that the name of the database is a uh, fake database and there's a table called uh, countries. So we're not gonna be using that table specifically, but you're gonna be seeing why and how we're gonna do it. So let me come here and write fake database and the host is going to be simply um, local host. And the dialect is the, the MySQL, the, the SQL type, like the, the database you're using. We're using MySQL, but this could have been Postgres. It could have been whatever database you're using. So this is okay for now. So let's save this and let's go to the model. So basically on the models, you'll see that for now, there's only an index.js. And inside of here, there's a bunch of stuff that you probably don't get what they are and you don't need to understand. This is just uh, normal stuff that uh, comes with a CLI and you don't even need to configure them. However, there's something important to understand that they use some packages that we don't have currently. For example, they use FS and they use path. We did install SQLize, but we have to install both of this. So let's come here and write npm install path and FS. Path just allow us to uh, configure our paths while we're working with some directories and file system allows us to manage our file system. So this is why they're using it. So now that we have both of those packages installed, this is basically how you work with SQLize. So the first thing you need to understand is that with SQLize, we create uh, different tables as models. So instead of creating our table directly here in our MySQL workbench, let's create a file called, for example, we should create a table for, um, I don't know, user let me create a folder called a, a table called user so user.js and inside of here i'm going to be configuring everything related to that table and the syntax to configure a model in sqlize basically is you write module.exports 
which means that we're going to be exporting this module. And instead of here, you can write SQLize, uh, not the capitalized one, the normal SQLize, then data types. And this is going to be a function. So we're exporting a function. And instead of here, we've got to put the name of our table. So of our object user equals to SQLize dot define. And now we need to put the name of the table. So I'm going to create a table called user. And over here, we can just put all of the information from our table. So first, we're going to have a, a column called first name. And I don't know, let's give it a type. So basically, in SQL, as you got to call this variable called data types, this property called data types, and it has a bunch of different ver uh, ver uh, properties of it which represents the different data types in a system. So basically, if we create a column in our database, uh, in our table of users, and that column is the first name, that would be a string. So we can simply write here dot string. So after a type, we can give, for example, a property called allow, uh, allow null and pass a Boolean, for example. I don't want this to be ever null, so I'm gonna call it false. And we can pass something called validate, meaning that we can pass a property called not empty. And if we give it true, then it means that we shouldn't be able to complete an SQL statement if that we try to insert an empty uh, an empty string for the this column. So basically, these are the main uh, properties you can insert in a column. And there are a lot of other ones. It's just like we we would be creating a, a table in our MySQL workbench. However, we're doing it with code and treating stuff like objects. So we created the first name. Let me do a copy of this, but not not for first name. I'm gonna be doing one for I don't know age, and because I just wanna I just wanna show you guys that you can make this, for example, a number, and let's live it like this as well. So let's basically save this, and over here in the bottom. So basically, we created our user. And we passed all of this information in the bottom of this function. We got to return this object that we created called user. So we can just write return user. And basically, this is how we create a model. You create you export a function which creates the table, and at the bottom you return that object. And you'll understand why this works at the end. But basically, if we come here to our index.js, we can come right here, create a variable called db equal to uh, require and what we will be requiring is basically all of our models so every single model will be handled into this variable and if we come here to our app.listen and we write db.sqlize.sync and you write here dot then and pass a require and the function Basically, inside of, wait, let me let me erase this. Basically, in, you can wrap this around the app dot listen because now, whenever you try to run the server, is going to be calling for the models in the models folder, seeing if there's already a table uh, represented by user, for example. If there isn't, it's going to create one, and if there is, it's just going to be treating it and managing it through our code. So we're going to test this, for example. I'm going to be coming here and basically just closing this and I'm going to try to run my server. So I'm going to write node index.js and an error appeared. Let's take a look. Oh, I get what the error is. Basically, first of all, we don't need the MySQL object right here. And secondly, when you're working with, with SQLize, you shouldn't be using this version of MySQL. And I don't know why this is. I just know that this is <laughs> what I always use. I always uninstall my SQL and the actual version you need to install is npm install my SQL 2. I don't know what the difference is, but I know that it won't work with my SQL, the, not the, the, the other version. So now that we can save this and we write node index.js, you can see that it's going to give an error. Actually, it didn't give an error. It just re resulted everything that we created. So you can see here's the SQL statement. It's creating a table. So basically, since we didn't have a table, it should have created a table. Let's come here and 
let's refresh our database to see uh, if a table was created. And wait, uh, let me refresh the tables. So let's see. So guys, basically I just got what the error was when I, when I created my data type dot number. For some reason, I called it number, it's integer. If you're trying to work with numbers, it's integer. I don't know why I thought it was number, but now if we try to run again, and you can see that we don't have a user table, we only have a countries table. When we run our server, it's going to basically uh, execute everything. You can even see at the bottom server running and he executed all of this SQL statement by itself. And if we go to the MySQL workbench and I refresh my tables, you can see that now there's a table called users with every single thing that we, we defined it. For example, a first name and an age, and it also includes an ID. And for also, it will always create these two columns, which is created at and updated at. You don't need to worry about them. It's basically providing more information from uh, for every SQL statement you do. So if you insert something, it's going to automatically uh, change that to the time you inserted the element. So just take notice that this will always appear. So now I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to uh, manage those uh, databases, basically making insert statements and selecting stuff by using SQLize. So basically to make different SQL statements with SQLize, you need to come here to our index.js and let's create some routes. So I'm gonna be creating an app.get route, which is going to be slash select. So I'm basically just wanting to see everything in our database. And I'm gonna pass the classic require and response and pass a function. Instead of here for now, let's just res.send uh, the message uh, select. So basically this will be a route that whenever we call this, we just want to see the data in the database displayed. Then we want to get one called insert and let's get one called delete. So basically it's going to be a, a delete statement and let's change this to post and this to delete. So basically we're creating three routes uh, one called slash select, one called slash insert and one called slash delete. And let me change this to insert and this to delete. So basically what we're gonna do is whenever we wanna insert stuff in our database, we go to this route and it's going to insert some data. Whenever we want to delete something, we can just come to this one and it's going to delete some data. And when we want to see all the data in our database, we can just come to this one. So basically the core principle of working with an ORM is basically acting like it's an object. So if we come here and import, all of our models for now, we just have a user model. So we can just write user. So exactly like the name of the object you have here, user you can write user and require a dot slash models. This now represents exactly like that object. So if we want to create a new element and make an insert statement, we can just come here and write user dot create. And over here, we can pass all of the different values from that database, from that table, sorry. So like we can pass a first name and an age, which are the two columns that we, we defined that we need to pass. So if we come here and write first name and we give something like Pedro and we give an age, so 19. But after creating our object, we can just catch. So this is almost like, this is like a try catch and we can grab if there's any error and if there isn't, we can catch an error. So if there is an error, so if error, we can just console log that error. So console log error. For now, we shouldn't be expecting any error, but this is just in case we couldn't create it. So, oh, I just realized since we're not communicating with our front end or with anything, let's just change both of this to get, sorry about that. Basically, we just want to make those changes whenever we refresh the page so it doesn't make sense to have a post and a delete request. We just want to get a, we just want to use a get request. So if we go to our node index.js, you can see that now when we refresh our page, it's going to go forever. However, it already executed the statement. It's going forever because we never ended our statement right here. If we just wrote here res.send a message, it would have stopped, but it doesn't really matter because if we go to our database and we refresh this, the data should appear right here. So this is pretty nice. Let's save this and run it again. So you guys can see that it doesn't go forever uh, every single time. So you can see that now we, it stopped going forever. However, I guess, let's see if, 
if something happened. Let's see if it's inserted again. Yeah, it inserted again. The same element. It doesn't have to be the same, like different uh, values. Every time we refresh this, so I'm gonna refresh this like ten times. You can see that it created as many elements as I refreshed. And one interesting thing is, for example, let's change this to, uh, I don't know, John. And I'm gonna close this and run this again because I wanna show you guys that we can have different variables. So I'm gonna refresh this and create some Johns. And when I refresh this, now in a database there's two users, some Pedros and some Johns. So basically guys, if we want to see all of our data in the front end, so basically select all of our data, instead of making a simple SQL statement saying, select all from the database, we can just come here, write user dot find all. So basically the select all is represented by a function called find all and it's a promise. So we can write dot then and pass a function which is going to be taking a variable called users. And this users variable is going to represent the result of this find all statement. So we can just write res dot send users. And we can also catch this. So catch. And over here, we can catch an error. And just, I don't know, console.log the error. So that should be fine. So let's refresh this. And node index.js, the server is running. If we come to the localhost 3001 slash select and refresh this, you can see that now all of our data in the database is displayed here. However, let's imagine you just want to see people who have the name John. You can come here to the find all and pass an object inside of here with a property called where. And this property basically will contain the field. So for example, first name is the field I want to check and the value you want to select. So I just want to get people called John. I think this is how John is spelled, right? Yeah, John. And I can save this. Now, if I rerun this, you can see that it's only going to display people with the name John. And this is basically how you work with select statements in SQLize. So now we're going to basically just work with deleting people. So let's just imagine that whenever I do this, I just want to delete someone with the ID 10. So basically, if you come to the database, you can see that there's a person with the ID 10 and it's a Pedro. And I just want to delete that person. The simple way of doing it is coming here and writing user dot destroy. And inside of here, you can write where and again, first, no, actually ID is equal to 10. So this is very simple. Let's refresh this. You can see that if I come to the slash delete, it's going to res dot send delete. And if you come to our database, this person right here shouldn't exist anymore. As you can see, that person disappeared. So these are the basic statements of uh, SQLize. So basically, this is most of your things you're going to do. I'm going to be making more uh, video series on different projects. So I just wanted to make this video because I'm going to be using SQLize because of how efficient it is to be working with objects instead of simple MySQL statements directly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, please leave a like down below and comment what you guys want to see. Subscribe if you enjoyed this channel and I'll see you guys next time.